hello guys welcome back to this channel today we'll see about how to design cantilevered piles penetrating sandy soil so i'll show you step by step how to design this cantilever uh, sheet pile so first we'll determine the lateral earth pressure at every depth then determine its corresponding force after that we'll estimate the maximum moment and finally uh, will determine the section modulus for this uh, cantilever pile so as you can see this cantilever pile AB is penetrating a granular soil sandy soil having saturated unit weight effective friction angle and there is no cohesion it also has a depth of penetration D prime and as you can see we have a groundwater table at a depth Z is equals to L1 from the surface and since we have a groundwater table on both sides there will the hydrostatic pressure will be zero since the hydrostatic pressure on both sides will cancel each other so let's proceed so at a depth is equals to Z is equals to L1 we have a lateral earth pressure due to this overburden of the soil so it will be given by this equation so we have sigma 1 prime which is equals to the unit weight of the soil multiplied by its height which is l1 multiplied by the active lateral earth pressure so until the depth l1 plus l2 we only have active uh, lateral earth pressure we do not have any positive so sigma 1 prime will have such triangular distribution starting at zero from the surface and its maximum will be at z is equals to l1 and active pressure at depth l2 will be given by sigma 2 prime which is gamma l1 plus its effective unit weight multiplied by l2 the whole lateral earth pressure coefficient ka notice that we have used gamma prime instead of gamma saturated the reason behind that is when calculating lateral earth pressure we use effective stress and not total stress so gamma prime will be gamma saturated minus the unit weight of water so this pressure distribution represents sigma 2 prime at a depth z is equals to l1 plus l2 so what will be the lateral earth pressure beyond this depth so beyond this depth we have active pressure acting from right to the left and we have passive lateral earth pressure acting from the left toward this right so for the active we have gamma l1 plus gamma prime l2 gamma l1 plus gamma prime l2 plus since we do not know this depth we'll use z minus l1 plus l2 multiplied by ka similarly for the passive pressure for the passive pressure we do not have any lateral earth pressure on this side so it's only lateral pressure comes from the embedment depth so it will be gamma prime z minus l1 plus l2 multiplied by kp kp being the lateral passive earth pressure coefficient so the net pressure will be sigma prime which is the active pressure minus the passive pressure so sigma prime is given by this quantity which is sigma 2 you can see that this term is and this term are similar minus sigma prime z minus l1 minus l2 the whole kp minus ka so rearranging the terms we have obtained this equation sigma prime is equal to sigma 2 minus gamma prime z minus l1 kp minus ka where l is equals to l1 plus l2 so the net pressure will be zero at the depth l3 below the dredge line so we will set we will set the previous equation to zero 
So since, as you can see, since the pressure crosses this sheet pile or the cantilever pile, at this point, the <coughs> the uh, the net pressure will be zero. Sorry. So sigma two minus gamma prime z minus l, the whole kp minus ka is equal to zero. So we will solve for z minus l, which represents l three. So z minus l will be l three, which is equal to sigma two prime divided by gamma prime kp minus ka. And what is this term? One over gamma prime kp minus ka. This term is the slope of this line. The slope of this line. So we can obtain the pressure at these points using trigonometry. So this point is uh, sigma three. We have L four. We know the slope of the line. So using trigonometry, tan of this angle, which is tan theta, which is one over sigma prime kp minus ka, will be equals to L4 divided by sigma 3. And sigma 3 is given by, which is equal to gamma L4 kp minus ka. Next, at the bottom of the sheet pile, we have passive earth pressure acting from the right toward the left and the passive acting and the active acting from left to right. So at the depth z is equal to L1, we have passive earth pressure and the passive will be gamma multiplied by L1, gamma prime multiplied by L2, gamma prime multiplied by the embedment depth D, the whole by kp representing passive earth pressure coefficient and the active earth pressure will be active earth pressure will be gamma prime multiplied by d multiplied by ka so the net uh, pressure at the bottom of the sheet pile is represented by sigma 4 prime which is equal to passive lateral earth pressure minus active lateral earth pressure so sigma passive minus sigma active is represented by this equation and this term represents sigma 5 prime sigma 5 prime So for the sheet wall to be stable, the summation of forces in the x must be zero. So all forces acting on the x must be zero and balanced and we have to also prevent rotation. So to prevent rotation, summation of moment, any moment acting at the bottom of the cantilever pile must be also zero. So summation of moment at point B is equal to zero. Hence, before calculating the forces we have to determine uh, before calculating, we have to determine the force, and the force is equal to area of pressure diagram. Say the area of A, C, D, E is equal to P. So A, C, D, E is equal to P. So summation of forces in the X must be zero. So area of A, C, D, E plus area of F, H, B, G minus area of EF HB must be zero. So area of ACDE is equals to P and the area of FHBG is the area of FHBG is equal to the area of a triangle which is half the height is L5 the base is sigma 3 prime plus sigma 4 prime minus the area of E F H B and its area will be half the base is sigma 3 prime and the height is L4 and we set that we set the total equation to zero finally to prevent rotation summation of moment at point B must be zero so we have P 
multiplied by its moment arm z bar plus l4 minus half of sigma 3 prime multiplied by l4 in its moment arm will be l4 over 3 plus half of l5 multiplied by sigma 3 prime plus sigma 4 moment arm will be l5 over 3 and we have obtained L5 by using this equation. Next, we have to determine L4. L4 can be determined by this polynomial equation. So, having a degree 4, L4 to the power of 4, plus A1, L4 to the power of 3, minus A2, L4 square, minus A3, L4 minus A4, which is equal to 0. So, to solve this polynomial equation, we have to estimate this coefficient as A4, a3, A2, and A1. A1, A2, A3, and A4 can be determined by these equations. Maximum moment. The maximum moment will occur between points E and F prime. So if we found the points of zero shear, the point of zero shear will correspond to maximum moment. So we'll take a new axis where the origin will be at point E. So to do that, we have to first determine this dimension Y by using trigonometry E F prime F. We can determine Y. The slope of the line, which is equal to tan theta, which is equal to Z prime divided by Y. So y will be given by sigma prime kp minus ka multiplied by z prime so the area of this triangle will be p2 which is equals to half z prime into y rearranging this we have obtained z prime so we can solve for z prime so if we found z prime and we have found z bar we can estimate the maximum moment. So the maximum moment will be the load P multiplied by the moment arm Z prime plus Z bar minus half of gamma prime Z prime squared KP minus KA the whole Z prime bar by 3. Finally, once we have obtained the maximum moment, we can proceed to estimating the section modulus. Section modulus is equal to maximum moment divided by the allowable stress. The allowable stress. So this diagram represents the maximum moment. So this is how we design a cantilever piles penetrating sandy soil. So if you have any questions, please uh, forward your questions through comment below if you find this video helpful uh, please don't forget to subscribe i will see you in the next video so thank you